Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello. If you are returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate you. So first off, I feel like I'm giving Yas a fine like chess from the parent trap. Um today and I'm very much living for it so please live it with me I really appreciate it uh second of all I have gained over like a thousand subscribers since my last videos that I uploaded last month um and I'm also only like a little over 600 away from my long goal of 20,000 subscribers which is just mind-boggling also my channel hit 1 million views which is also just unfathomable to me. So I just wanted to start this video off with a giant thank you <laughs> for your continued support, whether you've been here for almost two years, cause it's almost been two years, or if you've been here for like two weeks, I really don't care. Thank you so much for your support. I really, really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll never be able to fully articulate how much I appreciate it. So I'm just gonna stop there. But yes, now that I love you all so, 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 so much. And yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say. So first off, thank you for your support on my last two videos, um, particularly the reaction video. I did not know that I was gonna get that kind of a reaction <laughs> to that kind of a video, um, but everybody seemed to like it, so that's great. There's gonna be another one coming up after this. I promise you, I am not only doing reactions, that's not what I'm going to become. It makes it so that I am able to produce more content because like scripting, these sit down videos takes a minute, so reaction videos are good kind of like, filler so I can still be active with y'all and start conversations with y'all but not have to have like a script. So yeah, there'll be another reaction coming after this. But in my last reaction video to Anna or Glitter and Lasers, I kind of alluded to the fact that I was going to make this video. Um, and some people brought up some really good points in the comments of that reaction video, which made me know that I want to make this. Today we're going to be talking about the part that like not a lot of people talk about when it comes to starting a weight loss journey or deciding to lose weight, particularly if you are obese, super morbidly obese, anywhere on that spectrum. Um, and that is the kind of daunting fact that you will be fighting obesity for the rest of your life. <laughs> and I know that sounds horrifying when you first realize it, because it is, it is horrifying. But I've kind of started to learn to find it more exciting than anything now. And so I just wanted to start this conversation about this because I feel like on a lot of weight loss social media, weight loss surgery social media, um, there's very definitive before and afters when really there's like, there is a before. I would say there's a very definitive before, but the after is constantly changing um, because obesity is a disease in my opinion. And it is something that you are having to combat for the rest of your life. Much like my other videos pertaining to weight loss and weight loss surgery. And this is more of like a think piece <laughs> than like lending advice, I guess, um, because I just think this is a really important conversation to have. And it's been something that I've been talking about to people in my personal life and just something I've been thinking about a lot recently. And so I wanted to just put it out there because why not? The reality is, is that once you've been obese once, you have to be fighting for the rest of your life to not be that way if you don't want to. <laughs> and, uh, that's just the sad truth of it. And like I said, I know that sounds horrifying, but it is just the truth. And honestly, I think the sooner you kind of realize that, the less pressure um, you will put on yourself to have a certain to have a certain goal achieved in a certain amount of time. I have heard people compare obesity to um, addiction. And having been around addicts in my life, I do think there are some similarities, um, but I don't think they're inherently the same. I do think addiction is, an, is a disease, but I think um, obesity, I don't know, for some reason there's just something different and I, that could just be a me thing, I don't know. Um, but I guess I just lightly make the comparison because like even when in recovery, you're still actively having to fight 
um, not slipping back into bad habits. And at times that can feel super duper overwhelming. And I have been feeling the brunt of that for a while. I'm going to level with you. One of my biggest fears ever since having weight loss surgery and losing 100 pounds is, well, now it's technically 85 because I am combating regain, which is another reason why this has been a topic that's been heavy on my mind. Um, Ever since having that, uh, one of my biggest fears is becoming a statistic and gaining all of my weight back. And that's no hate to anyone who has experienced that. It's just something that I'm really afraid of because when I was 315 pounds or thereabouts, I was miserable and I never ever wanna get back there again. And I've been working with a registered dietitian to lose the regain that I've put on since last year. And I know that regain is a completely normal, natural part of a weight loss process, but it's still just been something that's been really hard for me to come to terms with. Um, particularly because when I start from when I started my bariatric program to well after I had surgery, I was on a constant downward pattern. I never gained weight over the course of that time. And the only, I only just started having to navigate regain like last year. And so this is a very new thing for me and I'm very hard on myself. And so I think sometimes I feel like a failure. (laughs) Even though in the grand scheme of things, I still have lost 85 pounds and that's not anything to like shake a stick at. Um, But it's just something I personally am really hard on myself for. When in reality, a weight loss journey, which I really, I think that phrase, sorry, I want it to keep, I want it to continually look like I am wearing a shirt underneath this, but I think with the way I'm sitting, it's just not gonna work. (laughs) As much as I think the term like weight loss journey is corny. I think it is very accurate in that losing weight, deciding to get healthy, whatever, is just that. It's a journey. It never ends. It has its ebbs and flows, its ups and downs, and it's just always going to be that way. You are always going to be fighting like this obesity thing for the rest of your life. And like many of my, some people who watch my videos like to point out, yes, I am still obese, but I'm not nearly as obese as I used to be. So, yep. But I do think that's why I think like a lifestyle change is a better way to phrase it because it is a lifestyle, it is a life commitment. It's not just something you do for a while. It's it's something you're gonna be committed to for the rest of your life. And I was just talking to my parents about this and it's like, I have come to terms with my regain And I have come to terms with the fact that I am now working to get it off. Um, But my lifestyle has changed so much in that I know I can get it off and that I want to. I think I am more conscious of my diet and exercise routine than I ever have been. And so it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm probably not going to gain all my weight back either because of that. Um, But I have only just started coming to terms with the fact that like this isn't a beginning, a hard beginning and a hard end kind of a process. It truly is something that just changes and fluctuates and whatever throughout the rest of your life once you start making the decision to actively get healthier. And this might be kind of a hot take, (laughs) but... um, I think if you've ever been obese uh, or struggled with weight or whatever, um, no matter how much balance you find in your life, which I am very much finding that balance now, which is great, no matter how much balance you find in your life with your diet and your exercise and whatever, you're probably never going to have a fully normal relationship with food. And I know that sounds horrifying and daunting, but it's just kind of something I've had to learn to accept over the last year or so. And I think it's because you will always, after you start losing weight, no matter how you go about it, you will always be conscious of the food that you are putting in your mouth. And I think it's because you have to be so diligent with it for quite a while. And then once you kind of enter in like maintenance or whatever, 
Like, you still have to be very diligent about it so that you don't go in the opposite direction. But it's it's just a very interesting thing. It's not even like I'm always thinking about food or whatever, but my relationship with food is different to other people like in my life who have never had to deal with these kinds of things before. And it is just kind of one of the unfortunate side effects of having been super morbidly obese and then deciding to lose weight is that I probably will never have like a totally normal relationship with food again. And I know this all sounds like horrifying and I don't want it to make you scared to embark on a weight loss health wellness journey at all. That's not my goal with this video <laughs> because it shouldn't. It shouldn't make you scared. I love my life now more than I ever did before. And I mean, a lot of things have changed since I decided to lose weight, including like me living on my own, graduating college, kind of starting my own life. But the reason I was comfortable with doing any of that was because I did something for my body to make me feel better in my body and to trust my body more than I ever have before. In my video reacting to Anna, I was talking, or she was talking about how daunting it seemed that she was gonna have to be in quite a bit of pain and go through quite a bit of hardship before things started to get better. And she was phrasing it that it was gonna be a really long time. I made a comment towards that and I said how it is daunting at first because you're kind of like, when you have your click moment, you're kind of coming to the realization that like you essentially did this to yourself and like it just seems super daunting and that or it's gonna take forever to like make any change, see any progress at all and I said, it gets less painful and less daunting quicker than you think it's going to. Having been on like, on the end of the spectrum where like, I probably would have lost my mobility. I don't know when, but I know that I was like going down that road because I was literally just getting like shin splints walking across my college campus when I was at my heaviest. I look at like my ability to lift things and to like be able to move for more than 10 to 20 minutes at a time without being sore and just new active things that like I am doing now as very exciting things instead of them being daunting. Once you look at it as like being excited to do new things, then I think that's when it becomes more of a lifestyle change than like this part of your life because it just constantly makes life more and more exciting because you feel more capable to try new things. Like I look forward to trying new healthy foods that I love that make me feel good after I eat it. I love trying new activities now. Like I just signed up for a pole dancing class this Sunday. I, uh, I signed up for one a few weeks ago and then I got sick so I had to cancel, but I finally was able to get back into it and I'm going on Sunday and I'm very excited about it. Would I ever would have done that at uh, 300 pounds? Absolutely not. <laughs> and like last summer, I took up paddle boarding and that was something I had wanted to do, but I just never did when I was at my heaviest because I didn't trust my body to do it. I didn't trust my balance. I didn't trust my body. I didn't trust my strength. But now last year I was like, sure, why not? Let's just give it a whirl. And I wound up loving it. Somebody commented on my video about Anna and they put it perfectly and I'm gonna read it and I thank you for commenting this. <laughs> Something I, I'd add to the discussion at 38 minutes. It's not the journey that ever ends. It's that when you do it right, you'll enjoy it so much that you won't want to stop. I analogize. I have never used that word in my life before. <laughs> it to climbing a big mountain. When you're at the bottom, it seems like the it's the only goal and that there's an end point. But when you get to the top, you get to see all the other peaks you could summit. And when you get to that and when you get to the top, you're just as likely to a po to point to a peak in the distance and say I want to climb that. Wow, I butchered that, but I'm going to have it up on the screen. I just thought like this was a really great anal analogy uh, to describe what I am trying to describe in the entirety of this video. The best way I can put it, honestly, me personally, is that after weight loss, getting healthier, more fit, whatever you're trying to accomplish, I feel like I... I feel like I and others that I have talked to have learned to love and appreciate life so much more. And you learn, like I said, you learn to trust your body so much more 
When I was at my heaviest, I was so scared to try anything new in terms of physical activity. I just like didn't trust my body and I never want to go back to that point again. And I love my body and all of the things it can do now. And I and all the new trust I have in it, and I'm still getting there to be honest, but like the trust that I have in my ability to do new things is infinitely better than it ever used to be. And that makes life so much more exciting. And I think also kind of tying into all this, once you kind of realize that like losing weight and fighting obesity is more of a long game instead of a thing that you do the bulk of once and then just kind of obsess over like maintaining, at least that's what I did. <laughs> I think once you realize it's more of a long game and it doesn't have a definitive endpoint and it shouldn't really have a definitive endpoint, I think that helped me when I realized that it helped me fix my relationship with health and wellness. It doesn't seem as daunting to know that I have the rest of my life to figure it out along the way. It doesn't have to be perfect all the time and finding new ways you enjoy moving your body and finding new healthy foods you love to make and you love to eat that make you feel good after you eat them is a lifetime's worth of work and that's okay because we're constantly changing. And when I started looking at it that way, it really helped alleviate a lot of pressure that I had on myself. And so I just wanted to make this video to for anybody who might just be starting this whole thing or for people who have done it, who have done the bulk of it and now are kind of realizing like, wow, this is a lot of work <laughs> to keep up. And I think I'm kind of realizing that that's okay. Like it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. Just as long as we're making like smaller good decisions like to benefit our health and our wellness over the course of our life that's that's all that really matters you don't really have to go balls to the wall all the time um I did to get the initial weight off but now that I'm kind of in like maintenance and like losing some regain and whatever that phase um yeah I just I think looking at it as more of a long game and a lifelong thing is the best way for me and uh, I've talked to some people who agree that it's the best way for them as well. Like I said, I wasn't really making this video to lend any advice. Um, it's just something that's been heavy on my noggin for a while because I was just talking to somebody the other day that like fighting obesity is kind of exhausting. It's like not a great thing to have to do all the time. But I think when I started to reframe it as like being excited uh, about all the new things that I can do now, that changed my view of it a lot. And I did talk about in a video once before where sometimes I really just miss like not giving a fuck. Like, <laughs> and I still stand by that. Like I miss, I miss just not giving a shit like all the time. But I think now it's kind of become learning to find that healthy balance of like not really caring sometimes, but caring for the most part because it benefits you in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> and because it makes you feel better. But yeah, I just wanted to start this conversation. Sound off in the comments what you think about it. Um, yeah, I'll be down there. I'll be talking for a little while. And that's all I've got for this one. Um, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Drink your water. Take your meds. And I'll see you in the next one. I love you so much. Bye.